This video is designed to help Year 12 accounting students learn about recording in inventory cards. So what is inventory and who has it? Well, inventory is the name given to any goods that are purchased by a trading firm that we hold for the purpose of reselling at a profit. So trading firms are any business that purchase goods and then resell them. So they might purchase from a manufacturer or a wholesaler and then they sell them on. They might also produce their own goods and then sell them. An example of this would be a store like Bunnings. Their inventory would include many different items, in fact tens of thousands, but might include things like tools, construction materials, plants, gardening supplies, even things like playground equipment uh, is all part of the inventory of Bunnings. So why is inventory important? Inventory is the main source of revenue for trading firms. So in other words, if we don't have inventory, we have nothing to sell. This is why it is usually one of the largest assets of a trading firm. You know, you, they're going to have things like premises, maybe vehicles, but they're also going to have lots of stock or inventory. It's also really important because it's one of our most vulnerable assets. And what we mean by that is it can be easily damaged, stolen, or lost. So it's really important we have good practices and strategies to manage our inventory effectively. Inventory in the general ledger. Um, the general ledger account for inventory is very complex. It's one of the largest accounts with regards to the number of different kinds or possibilities of transactions. And you can see that from the um, screenshot on the right of, um, of my page here. It's really important that we know how to read these transactions so you know what to expect to see in there. This will become really important in uh, Unit 4 when we start to look at things like account reconstruction because you can see from the transactions over here that we've got many, many different transactions. So we've got four different kinds of transactions on the debit side and we've got one, two, three, four. Um, five if we include the balance on the credit side. So quite an extensive uh, series of transactions. So what would be a good practice now is if you wanted to pause the video, you would be able to then use these little annotations next to each of them and try to annotate this uh, screenshot for yourself. So for example, I've got here that my first annotation would be for the opening balance. I can tell that because of the cross-reference balance, the fact that it occurs on August 1st, and the fact that it's on the debit side of an asset account. So if you'd like to have a go at this activity, I suggest now that you pause, and then once you're ready, you can click play, and the solutions will become available on the screen. So for those that are continuing on, our solutions, are down here. So this is a good opportunity to press pause, check your responses, and then you can go through and have a look at the different kinds of transactions in this ledger. So how do we account for inventory? Well, we use inventory cards and you would have seen these in Unit 1 and 2 or Year 11 accounting. So most trading firms carry a really high number of inventory items. Every single item of inventory will have its own inventory card. And the reason why we do this is because it's vital that we have really detailed information about the movement of our inventory. So an inventory card is what we call a subsidiary record. Subsidiary just means like secondary or it sits underneath the main records. Our main records being journals and ledgers. This accounting record shows the transactions for a particular line of inventory and the movements in and out. So you can see here from this inventory card that this is just for plant pot terracotta 60 centimetres, so very specific. In the details section, this is where we record the source document that evidences the transaction. So you can see here I've got an invoice, a credit note and a receipt. Anything that happens in the in column is where transactions are involving inventory coming into the business or an increase in inventory. In the out column, this is where we're going to have decreases of inventory or inventory going out of the business. And the balance column is updated after each transaction and that's a running total of the inventory levels. This is particularly important because this helps us to know how to do things like reorder inventory when we're running low. 
So we're going to have a look at six different examples of items uh, and transactions to be recorded in the same inventory card. So what we've got here is we've got an inventory card for Easy Grow Daisy Kits. Now normally this is going to be pre-filled for you but I'll just pop it in here. So Easy Grow Daisy Kits and we would also have in here information about where it's stored. So let's say that it is stored on shelf 43 and our supplier is Frank's Flowers. So that would be pre-filled um, for you. So transaction number one, we've got here, we have here uh, on May 5, the business purchased seven Easy Grow Daisy Kits on credit from Frank's Flowers, who is our supplier. And these cost us $10 each plus $1 of GST. So on May 5, in the details section, we're going to put our source document, which is invoice 213. And because we've purchased these items, they're coming into our business. So I'm going to record that we had seven, each of them were $10 because we only record the value of inventory. We don't include GST in here, which is 70. I then need to update my balance. So I had three at May 1st. I now have seven more. So that means I've got 10 items at $10 each, which equals 100. Example two. So on the 7th of May, Nana's Nursery returned three kits to Frank's Flowers. The reason why we returned them was because they were damaged and we received a credit. So on May 7, we have our source document, which is credit note 12. And because we've returned these to the supplier, that means that they are going out of our business. So I'm going to put three in the quantity column at 10, which is 30. And once again, I'm gonna update my balance, which is now seven at $10 with a total of 70. My transaction number three, on May 12, so I put that in my date, Nana's Nursery sold four kits for $20 each plus $2 GST to customer R. Robertson. So source document goes in the details section. And because this is a sale, they're leaving my business. So I'm going to put four in the quantity. Now in the cost, I don't put 20, I put 10 and the reason why is because in the inventory card we deal with cost price not selling price so this $20 is how much we sold it to the customer for not how much that cost price of the inventory is so that's why it goes in at 10 so you can see here that I now have four items leaving the business I update my balance and now I've got three left at $10 each for a total of 30. The next transaction occurs on May 18. On May 18, R. Robertson returned one kit due to over ordering of items. Nana's Nursery, so our business, issued a credit note 15 for $20 plus $2 GST. So our source document is credit note 15 this is a sales return. In fact, it's related to the sale from May 12. So with this one here, because that item is coming back into our business, it's going in the in column. And once again, we record at cost price. So that's why I've put the cost at being 10. I update my balance. And now I have four items in my inventory balance. On May 22nd, the owner, Eloise, donated two kits to a trivia fundraiser night as prizes for a raffle. Now, we don't donate these for no reason. We donate things um, 
because we want to actually promote our business. So we're actually using advertising here. So a lot of people say, well, shouldn't we have an account called donations? We actually say we are donating for advertising purposes. So because this is a, um, a withdrawal of inventory for advertising, that's why it's created a memo. So we have memo three and we have two kits that are going to be leaving the business. Therefore, we have two kits left in stock. Now our last transaction, this should actually be transaction seven or example seven. On May 28, Eloise, which is the owner, they took home one kit to give to her niece as a birthday present. So memo six, this is a drawings of inventory. So we have one item leaving the business, which means that at the end of this uh, month, if this was the last transaction, we would only have one of these Easy Grow Daisy kits remaining. So one of the questions that's asked really frequently is how to calculate cost of sales using inventory cards. So when we're looking at this, we can use this information to help us calculate the cost of sales. So let's say we were asked to calculate the cost of sales for these Easy Grow Daisy kits. One of the things that we need to look for is what were the actual sales for the period? So we know that the only sale we had for this period occurred on May 12. So one of the first things to look for is transactions that are in the out column. But there are some things you have to be careful of. There are some things that might not be sales of inventory. So for example, drawings and advertising. These are not sales of inventory. We're not actually selling these items, we're giving them to the owner or we're giving them to another business for advertising purposes. The other one is also things like our purchase returns. These aren't sales, so be really careful with these. Now, we also need to take into account our sales returns. And we had a sales return on the 18th of May of one item. So whilst we sold four on the 12th of May, one of those was returned to us on the 18th. So in this instance, the cost of sales would be three items at $10. So the total cost of sales would be 30. If you wanted to challenge yourself, there's a good opportunity to do a review activity here. And this would be taking this completed inventory card for the Easy Grow Daisy kits and turning this into general journal transactions. So you can actually take these and show in the general journal what would be the debits and the credits. So an activity you might like to do is sketch out a general journal and have a go at this. If you then want to do another layer, you might even want to try and sketch out the inventory account for the general ledger and try and picture what that would look like. These are all important skills in learning how to not only record in inventory cards, but also how inventory cards relate to or are connected to the general journal and the general ledger.